uh, root and open up login.php. All right, so this is not going to be a display file. People are not going to go to this login page. Uh, basically, it's just going to handle our login. We're going to um, send our form to it, and then it will validate against the database through the user class and then redirect us. All right, so um, the first thing we need to include our initializer. Uh, we want to say PHP include core slash init dot php actually this should be in quotes all right and then the next thing i want to do is i want to check to see if that do login um, submit button was clicked so we want to say if is set post do login okay so basically we're saying if someone clicked the do the submit button uh, if they didn't okay so if someone just navigates to login.php without without um, actually submitting the login form then we want to just redirect them we don't want them to be able to land on that page so it's going to redirect to the home page all right so if it's clicked what do we need to do we need to first get the um, username and password so we'll just say get vars and username is going to be equal to post Okay, post username. All right, and then password is going to be equal to MD5. Okay, this is very important because remember, we stored our passwords in the database encrypted with MD5. So if we don't do this here, then it's going to match the non encrypted password against the, the encrypted password. So you want to make sure that you have this here. Okay, that's going to be password. All right, now we need to create a new user object. Okay, so user equals new user. And then we'll say, hey guys, whoops, right, sorry so about that. What we want to do now is we have okay, and then we're going to say if user login okay and we're gonna pass in into the login function we're gonna pass in username and password okay so if we do log in then what do we want to do we want to redirect okay we'll redirect to index.php and we will set a message We'll say you have been logged in, and the message type is going to be success. And remember, this redirect function we actually created in the system helper. Okay, so it's right here. All right, so, and then we're going to say else. Okay, because if the login does fail, then we are st we're still going to redirect, um, except we're going to change the message. We'll say that login is not valid, and we're going to set set the type to error. All right, so that's basically it. That should do our login for us. So let's go ahead and go, let's reload, and let's just put anything in. Uh, undefined method user log, oh, we didn't even create the, <laughs> sorry about that, we didn't create the, the class method login. Uh, so let's go to the user class and go down all the way or wherever you want to go. And I'm going to paste in 
some code here. Okay, so this is going to be the login method. Um, we pass in the username and password. We're creating a query, select all from users, where username is equal to username, password, password. And then we're going to bind the values down here to, um, to, to push in what we entered up here. All right, then we're going to uh, assign the row using the single method from our database class because we're only looking for one response, one record. And then it's going to say if the row count is greater than zero, which means a row came back, then what we're going to do is return true. But we also want to run this um, set user data method. And what that's going to do is it's going to set some cookie, I'm sorry, some sessions for us session variables to hold uh, for one a boolean expression for is logged in because we want to know if the user is logged in or not uh, we're also going to store the user ID the user name and the user's name alright so let me just um, paste that in here alright so basically we're calling set user data which is this function and we're going to set the session variables uh, is logged in is going to be set to true uh, and we can we can test to see if the user is logged in or not through this variable and then we have the user ID the username and the name and we can use these anywhere in our script at any time alright so I'm going to use it uh, in the login form when we're logged in I want the form not to show uh, and I just want to have a logout button. So let's go back to the footer where the form is actually located. Okay, templates includes footer. All right, and this is where the login form is. So, and instead of saying if session and then using the session variable, I want to create a, a cleaner helper function. So I'm going to go into helpers, system helper. All right, and we're going to create a small function called is logged in. Okay, so we want to go all the way to the bottom. All right, so this function is just going to check if the session variable is logged in is set. If it is, it'll return true. If not, it'll be false. All right, so let's save that. Go back to footer, and now we can say PHP if. say um, is logged in um, yeah if is logged in then um, let's see we don't want the form to show if we're logged in so what's down here we'll say PHP else and then we'll show the form, okay, and then we'll end it. All right, and then if we are logged in, um, basically I just want uh, a lot, I want a form, but I just want the logout button. So let me paste this in. All right, so it's a div. We have a div uh, with the class of user data, and we're just going to say welcome and then the user's name. Uh, so this get user function uh, we're going to define in our in our system helper as well. So let's go back to system helper, and then under the is logged in function we want to paste this. In. Okay, so it's just going to basically create a user array and basically just get the session variables and store them in the user array variable all right and then we can return the user array so it's just a, it's just a cleaner way of doing things of course you could just um, include these session variables right in your sidebar or wherever wherever but I think these functions make it a little cleaner all right so it's just gonna get the user get the users username all right, and then this form here is going to go to logout.php, which we'll create now, uh, which is just a submit button with the name of do logout. All right, so if we save that and let's go ahead and log in. 
Um, let's see, who do I have here? Let's see, uh, Brad T. Um, call to undefined method user login. Oh, uh, actually, user login. Did I not save it? I didn't save the user class again. Okay, so you just want to make sure that that's saved. And then we can do it again. That login is not valid. Uh, maybe I didn't use that. All right, that was the right. So now we're logged in. You can see it says, Welcome Brad T. Uh, it says you have been logged in, and we also have a logout button. So if we click that, it's not going to happen yet because we didn't, we didn't create the logout page yet. Okay, so let's do that now. Uh, so we want to go to our root and go to logout. And this is very simple, so I'm just going to paste this in. All right, so basically we're including our initializer. And then we're checking to see if the logout button was pushed. Uh, if it was, then it's going to create a new user object. And we're going to say if user logout, then we're just going to redirect with a success. Um, so let's go to, let's save this first and then go to the user class and paste in the logout code. Okay, so basically all we're doing is unsetting all of our session variables that we created when we log in. All right, and then we're just going to return true. So if we save that and reload, and let's go ahead and try to log out. Now we're logged out. You can see the form now displays again. So it's working pretty smoothly. All right, so the last thing I want to do now is this total number of users because uh, right now it's just a static number. So I'm just going to create that method in the user class. All right, so this is very simple. Uh, basically, we're just getting a query, select all from users. Then we're define we're putting the result set into a rows variable, and then we're just returning the row count. All right, and then we can save that. And now let's go to our index page, and just like we did here, we're gonna say templates total users is gonna equal. user actually we need to uh, instantiate a user object all right and let's see template total users is equal to user get what did we call it Um, let's see, where is a user? Get total users. All right, so let's see, back to the index. And this is going to be get total users. Okay, so now we should be able to use this total users variable inside of our template. So let's save this and open up the front page template. All right, and let's see, we need to look for total users. All right, so we want to replace this 52 with PHP echo uh, total users. Okay, now that should make that dynamic. So let's save that, reload, and you, now you can see we have four total users. All right, so we are definitely getting there. Basically, the two things we have left, the two major things, are to create a topic. All right, we want to um, log in and create a topic, and also to reply to a topic. All right, and we, we only want to be able to do those things if we're logged in. All right, so we'll do that next. Let's 
give that a shot. If we reload, we're not logged in, so we see create an account. All right, if we log in, now we see create topic. All right, so if I click create topic, we have our um, form. Now, one thing that I'm noticing is we don't have our editor for the topic body. This should be a, a simple editor so we can have bold text, um, italics, things like that. So let's just check out uh, the header file. And it looks like the, the JavaScript is being included in the footer. Um, and actually our CK editor um, JavaScript file isn't even included. So what I'm going to do is is take this JavaScript out and I'm going to put this in the header instead of the footer. Okay, so I'm going to cut that out. I'll get rid of these comments. 